Hey guys, I wanna do a real quick video talking a little bit about comfort in your home and humidity, but in addition to that, maybe talk about some indoor air quality when we're talking about humidity. Because when we talk about indoor air quality, we talk about all kinds of things. We talk about air cleaners, we talk about filters, we talk about all these different things that are on the market ionizers and just all these things that can do different things to help the air that you breathe. But one thing that we don't talk about enough, I feel like, is humidity in your home. Because a lot of times when people are talking about humidity, they're talking about it more from a comfort standpoint. And I've done other videos where I talked a little bit about that. You know, you have parts of the country where humidity is a bigger issue than in other parts of the country. And I think ultimately, I just want you to keep that in mind. So some of the things I'm about to go over might be different, might play a role in what part of the country you're in and just keep that in mind. I know there's parts of the Northwest that you guys deal with more cooler, clammy type weather, high humidity, even though it's cool. Whereas other parts of the country, it's a little more drier when it's cool. And then obviously, if you live in a more humid climate, say if you're in the Southeast, you have issues in the summertime with moisture and it's really humid. And then you go to other parts of the country where we're talking about like say a, an, a desert or something like that. And and it's more drier even though it's hot so i think ultimately just keep that in mind that as i go through this what part of the country you're in might play a role in all this so ultimately i think just in general at least here in virginia across the board usually in the summertime we're talking about trying to lower the humidity for comfort levels and in the winter time we're talking about trying to rise the humidity for comfort levels so for example if it's really humid in your house in the summertime and it's kind of warm and you've got the ac on if that ac does not remove Move enough humidity from your house, you can still feel uncomfortable. So for, you know, if you got that temperature dropped all the way down to say 70 degrees, it can still feel warm in there because the humidity is still high. And then you go to somewhere else where the humidity is lower, but it's 70 degrees, it can feel almost kind of cold, right? So not all temperatures are necessarily created equal from a comfort level. I'm gonna throw up a chart right there. And this chart, it goes through some of the things you need to probably consider when you're talking about humidity in your home. Again, there are certain parts of the country where this is a bigger deal than others, but ultimately there's an optimum zone. There's a zone of humidity that you want it to stay between. And we're talking about in a residential, you're in your house, this is where you spend a lot of time and you don't want it to necessarily be above a certain humidity and you don't want it to be a below a certain humidity. So usually in most cases in our industry, we try to shoot for between 30 and 50%. I can tell you that in Virginia, being near the coast like we are, unless you have a really tight house, newer construction, and it's just built really tight where air doesn't get in and out very well, then there will be times when it's really hard to get the humidity down below 50% certain times of the year. But ultimately, we usually try to shoot for that little sweet spot for between 30 and 50% is ideally where you want to be. And I think this chart even shows it somewhere between 30 and 55%. But ultimately, if you look at this chart, we're looking at things like bacteria, viruses, funguses, mites, respiratory infections, allergic, asthma, chemical interactions, and ozone production. And ultimately, again, if you just look through there, I'm not an expert, I'm not a scientist. I'm sure there's other heating and air guys that might even see this that know way more about this stuff than even I do. Or if you even go to some of the websites like April Air and some of those companies that make this sort of stuff, they'll give you more information. But I think ultimately, again, if you look at this chart, just realize there is that zone. You don't wanna be above a certain humidity and you don't wanna be a below that. And so just keep that in mind when you're looking at indoor air quality and you're looking at cleaning the air in your home and things like that, just realize if you're talking about particulates, that's one thing. If you got things that you're filtering out of the air and cleaning the air, that's one thing. But if you're talking about viruses and things like that, th big things that we're really caring about these days, you wanna be looking at more than just cleaning that air and be looking 
looking at the humidity as well. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. And then finally, if you are in the market for a new heating and air system, if you're in the Middle Peninsula or Northern Neck of Virginia, give us a call, Griffin Air. We would love to earn your business. But if you're not in our coverage area, you're somewhere else in the country and you are in the market for a new heating and air system, before you spend thousands, check out my new website, it's called newhvacguide.com. I'll put a link to it down in the comments. And this website, I basically wrote a book, made it a guide, put it on this website. And instead of having a book that would be outdated within a year or two, I'm able to constantly add things on there if new things come out. And the other thing is I've even put information on there that people in our industry don't even want you to know. So I've got a whole page called no-nos and you know just things to stay away from and so on. That being said, thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.